Hi. During the last video, we talked about how you could charitably gift an appreciated security, such as a stock, a mutual fund, or an ETF. However, a problem could arise if the charitable institution, whether it's a university, a food bank, church, synagogue, mosque, if they don't have a brokerage account. They might have a bank account where they can receive cash, but they don't have a brokerage account that can receive stock. And that's a problem if you want to gift an appreciated stock so you don't have to pay capital gains on the growth. One possible way around this is to set up an account called a donor advised fund. This is your own charitable giving account into which you can put appreciated securities and then sell them and distribute the proceeds as checks to char charitable institutions. Meanwhile, you keep the remainder of the balance invested in the market and hopefully growing over time. The way you reduce taxes with a donor advised fund is by moving appreciated securities out of your taxable brokerage account and into the donor advised fund. There are two ways that this can reduce your taxes. The first, it may allow you to take a deduction on your tax return. And second, you avoid realizing capital gains upon the sale of the security. For more on this, go to my last video on charitable gifting in which I go into greater detail on how this works. Here's how I would think about picking stocks from the investments in a portfolio. Let's take a look at these four fictional stocks. Let's say we want to gift $10,000 to a charity. All of these stocks in my portfolio are worth $10,000. Uh, but if you look at the breakdown between the principal invested, the light orange, and the growth, it becomes clear that the stock number four has the greatest growth. It has $2,000 that's principal invested and $8,000 in growth. So if I wanted to gift $10,000, I would gift that one because I would avoid paying taxes on the capital gains of $8,000. So what if you make a contribution this year? but you still have leftover that lasts into future years. You only take a deduction for the year in which you add to the donor advised fund. From there on out, any distribution that comes out of the donor advised fund doesn't get you a second deduction. This could present an opportunity if you're in a particularly high tax year in which your bracket is higher than normal because of a bonus or some windfall that you don't normally receive. Let's say you gift $5,000 every year. In this example, it may make sense to do $25,000 in gifts this year when you're in the higher tax bracket and then make a distribution of $5,000 each year starting this year and running through the next five years from out of the donor advised fund. This has the advantage of giving you the tax deduction in the year in which it has the greatest effect uh, but it also allows you to pre-fund future charitable gifting and hopefully those funds while they're sitting in the donor advised fund are growing in value, increasing the amount that you can gift over the long term. There are three things to consider when picking the provider of your donor advised fund. Some companies I've seen have ranges of minimums from $5,000 to $25,000. Another item to be aware of is sometimes there's a minimum check that you can send. So if the minimum is say $250 and you intend to give your church $50 a month, one option there is either pick a different company or gift five months or $250 at one time. Lastly, be aware of the costs of each fund provider. Once you've given your security to the donor advised fund, it's not yours anymore. It belongs to this little charitable institution in your name. You can't ever take it back. So anything that you put in, you need to know that you're parting with it forever. Of course, don't assume that financial advice from your friend on YouTube applies to you. Always check with your tax advisor before making a decision like this. Lastly, money is a means, not an end. I like to finish each video by recommending a piece of classical music that will make your life richer in a different way. This time I want to share with you Johann Sebastian Bach's Cantata Number no. 29. It's triumphant, it's lovely, I think you'll really like it. It's also short. I'll include the link in the description below. Happy gifting!